Hey guys, what is going on? My name is Frostify and today we are going to be counting down the top 25 Photoshop tips and tricks in under 10 minutes. But without further ado, let's go ahead and get into these tips and tricks. Coming into tip number one, it is going to be a dark mode setting. So if you go up to edit, click preferences and go to interface, you can see that there's four blocks at the upper part of the settings that has color theme. You can click each of these to change your overall theme of Photoshop. You can do light mode, you can do semi dark mode or completely dark mode. I personally work in dark mode, completely dark mode and I definitely think it's worth it. Coming into tip number two, it is going to be blend if. So if you go down in the bottom right and click your layers, double click and go up to layer styles, you can see there is a section here for blend if. If you do in fact hold alt on one of these triangles, you can see that it will blend your image to a certain extent. Definitely something to keep in handy when you're blending and manipulations and blending highlights or anything really like, you know, light sourcey on your subject. Coming in at tip number three, it is going to be how to make custom chromatic aberration. This one's super simple. Just duplicate your layers twice. So Control J, go to your top layer and go ahead and go to the channels right here. Click off the G and the B. And then in the middle layer, do the exact same thing. Double click, but this time just click off the R. And once you do that, your chromatic aberration should be all set. All you have to do is go to the top layer and use your arrow keys to go left and right to create the chromatic aberration look. And you could also adjust it with fill and opacity. Coming into tip number four, we're going to be talking about smart objects. If you size up something in Photoshop that's been shrunk down, you will in fact lose quality. So if you do not want to make your graphic look like this it's super simple just go to your layer go ahead and right click and click convert to smart object and now you will never lose quality again no matter what size you size up from and other things like that coming in at tip number five it is going to be color banding now this is such a pain when you are working with backgrounds and you've got blocky colors but nothing a little noise can't fix go ahead and go to filter go to noise, add noise, and you can see that the banding gets a little bit better the more noise you add. However, personally, some would argue that the gradient way is better with Dither. As you can see, without Dither, you have the banding effect where you can go ahead and click Dither and get a very smooth gradient without any banding worries. Coming in at tip number six, it is going to be camera raw. You can totally do your CCs through adjustment layers, but I 100% recommend doing camera raw because camera raw is very versatile and gives you a lot of different settings to work with. If you guys want a full in-depth tutorial, I'm 100% down to make a custom video on this, but it is definitely the route to go with final color corrections. Coming into tip number seven, it is the shortcut to quick save. This is definitely something you should know as a graphic designer because you are going to be using it a lot. Just press control S and it will automatically save your document to whatever destination you have on your computer. It is basically meant for quick saving. Coming in at tip number eight, it is switching in between RGB and CYMK. This one is actually one that a lot of people don't really know about, but if you click control Y, it will switch between CYMK and RGB. And if you guys can notice, there is a slight difference in color because CYMK is actually meant for printing. And the way you can tell you're in either or is by looking at the overall layer name at the top. Coming in at tip number nine, it is adjusting your Photoshop memory to make it run faster. If you realize that your Photoshop is kind of slowing down, it is probably because of the memory. So go ahead and go up to edit, go to preferences and click performance. Once you're in performance, you could definitely see here that there is a lot of settings to mess with, but you want to focus on the slider right here. Basically, the higher the bar is the more memory your computer is going to use so I like to leave it right above halfway that way my Photoshop runs smoothly but also efficiently without killing my PC. Coming in at tip number 10 it is how to adjust recovery options in Photoshop so you never lose a file again. Go up to edit go to preferences go to file handling and you really want to focus on this checkbox right here that says automatically save recovery information. Once you click that this option will become available and you could select the drop down of how often you want your first recovery to be saved. This comes in so much clutch when your Photoshop Photoshop crashes and you need a recovery file. Coming in at tip number 11, it is to create a workspace that suits you. This is very, very important. Photoshop has a great customization feature. You can basically switch whatever you want. If you, you know, if I wanted my adjustment layers over here, you can go ahead and click that there. It's important to keep in mind that when you are adjusting your overall Photoshop layout, that it's personalized for you and it helps your workflow the most. Coming in at tip number 12, it is going to be the actual search feature in Photoshop. If you've ever heard people talk about certain tools and you can't really find it on the toolbar, do not panic at all. All you have to do is go up to the upper right and click the magnifying glass. Once you do that, it'll open up the search and you can type in whatever you want. Coming in at tip 13, it is going to be how to save for web in HD. All you have to do is go to file, go to export and click save for web legacy. You're going to want to switch your options to PNG 24 and the document size to be completely whatever you want, but the quality to be bicubic. This will definitely make your edges more sharper and definitely consider rendering in JPEG as well and saving in JPEG because that's also a really good saving method as well. Coming into tip number 14, it is going to be how to make a custom pattern in Photoshop. This is very simple. You just want to open up Photoshop with your
your custom image go up to edit and then click define pattern once you do that you can name it whatever you want click ok and before you know it you add a pattern layer and you have all sorts of layers you can use and pattern vibes you can mess with coming in at tip number 15 it is going to be coloring your layers in photoshop i recently sent out a tweet that said do you name your layers and a lot of people actually color their groups and this is something i definitely want to throw into this video so all you're going to want to do is right click on your layer and as you can see down here there's going to be a bunch of different coloring options you could change it to whatever you want and as you can see that layer is colored now you know how they do it in the graphics packs coming into tip number 16 it is going to be the photoshop navigator all you're going to want to do to get it is go up to window and click navigator and once you go ahead and click navigator put it up in the upper right hand part of your photoshop it should just snap into place this is absolutely fantastic for viewing thumbnail sized graphics in a little viewport so you can kind of see where it'll function in mobile devices and other platforms next up is opening the same image in two windows or different images in two windows in photoshop this can help a lot if you want to multitask and work in two different documents all you're going to want to do is click the document that you want to edit go ahead and drag it off and it'll snap to the right hand part of this screen over here and as you can see you now can work in two separate documents which is completely op in photoshop next thing i want to talk about is the use of displacement maps you guys can go absolutely anywhere and get displacement maps but essentially displacement maps are kind of like overlay slash morphs into your graphic that you can use from psds and all you're going to want to do to get that is to go up to filter click distort go to displace and then go ahead and click OK and upload your PSD of the texture that you want to appear in your actual design. Coming in at tip number 19, it is going to be using a calculator to calculate your document size. This is truly a phenomenal tip and I recently found it out and it's been a lifesaver for me. So if you want to make a new document and it's a 1920 by 1080 p document and you really want it to be 4K, all you really have to do is type it in like it's a calculator. This is a working calculator. So times two, as you can see, it goes to 3840 times two, Boom, create, and you've got yourself your document. It works for division, multiplication, and I believe addition and subtraction. Coming in at tip number 20, it is going to be content aware fill. If you ever want to release or remove a subject from your actual graphic, all you're going to have to do is grab the rectangular marquee tool, make your selection, go ahead and right click and click content aware fill, and it will basically substitute in your graphic and completely take out whatever is there. It works so good with people and graphics and landscape environments. Coming in at tip number 21, it is going to be the color adjuster. If you press control U, you have full hue and saturation settings on the go when you are designing. As you can see, you can change the colors of anything, saturation of anything, and the lightness of anything. Coming in at tip number 22, it is going to be how to create custom keybinds in Photoshop. If you already do not like the ones that are in Photoshop, all you have to do is go to edit, keyboard shortcuts, and you can change any keybind in Photoshop you want. Coming in at tip number 23, it is a quick way to zoom in and out. If you guys are using the zoom tool, this will save you so much time. If you go ahead and hold alt and use your scroll wheel on your mouse, you can see that it will basically zoom in at any period your mouse is at, which is super helpful when you are designing and trying to get those fine details figured out. Coming in at tip number 24, it is going to be how to use your quick align tools in Photoshop. So if you want to quickly align something to a composition, all you have to do is press control A, which will select your whole document and up in the upper toolbar, you can see that there is different align options if we go ahead and click the middle align one it will middle align it perfectly in our document and ladies and gentlemen the last tip number 25 is how to exactly size up your brush with ease so as you can see you can totally use your bracket keys to you know increase and decrease your brush size or you can go ahead and hold alt and then right click and then drag left and right with your mouse, which will give you a nice, easy transition when you are overall sizing up your brushes. And without further ado, guys, that was 25 Photoshop tips and tricks in hopefully under a certain amount of time. That was definitely way more tricky than I anticipated. And I really want to practice so I can get more content like that out because it's kind of fun to do little speed rounds and stuff, especially when it comes to little tips and tricks of Photoshop. If you guys learned anything in this video, go ahead and let me know down below in the description. And if you guys are interested in joining a design community, go ahead and join the front frostify design cord which will be in fact linked down below in the description and will be accessible to anybody of use it's super cool you can meet people compete in design competitions and overall just improve on designing in general and if you have any questions do not be scared to reach out to me on socials this was definitely a super fun challenge and super fun thing to do for you guys i plan to do more and i am definitely looking forward to it thank you guys so much for watching this has been frostify peace out